Sue Brownie here from Kit Guru, and in this review, I'm taking a look at the Corsair T2 Road Warrior gaming chair. Retails of around £320, and it's the second gaming chair that Corsair have released. It's more of like a comfort orientated version of their original T1 chair. It's available in five different colour accents. You've got black, black on black, black on yellow, black on red, black on blue, or I've got the black and white version. Before I head on and start talking about the rest of the review, let's jump back in time and take a look at my unboxing and assembly. The chair arrived in a giant box and everything was well wrapped in plastic and cardboard to help protect it during shipping. The instruction manual was good and it was clear to understand. It was a small book that had plenty of good pictures. The first step was to begin putting the wheels onto the metal base. I found them a bit difficult to get into place and it required quite a bit of force to push them in properly. I then placed the gas lift into the base before sliding the plastic cover over the top. The chair base came with the screws pre-attached so I had to undo them before putting the tilt mechanism in place. The armrests on this chair are pre-attached, but it looks like you can remove them if you're not a fan. I lined up the chair base with the gas lift before trying it out. This is where I found out that the gas lift was faulty. It just wouldn't adjust the height of the chair. I tried to get it to work for quite a long time by taking the chair apart, reassembling the base, and then I eventually gave up and emailed Corsair. Unfortunately, these things can happen and they did send me a replacement gas lift so I could finish building the chair a week later. The replacement gas lift was pretty stiff at first, but it has started to loosen up. The back of the chair also came with the screws pre-attached, so I removed them before lining up with the base. The chair back was more lightweight than other chairs I've built, so it was much easier to manoeuvre into place. I made sure that all the screws were done up nice and tight before attaching the covers using a screw for each. I then inserted the two rubber stoppers to tidy up the screw holes. The chair was pretty much finished at this point until I realised I would forgotten the plastic cover on the replacement gas lift. After a lot of pulling I managed to remove the base and put on the plastic cover. The final step was to attach the lumbar and neck support pillows with the elastic straps. The 
Overall, it took me about 30 minutes to build, which is a little longer than other chairs that I've built, but the screws did come pre-attached. The T2 Road Warrior is a very comfortable chair. The seat is nice and deep and wide, so I found there was plenty of space to get comfortable. The backrest feels quite supportive and it's a really ergonomic shape. It's much more comfortable if you remove the rather overkill lumbar pillow though. This chair also comes with a neck support pillow and I really like this because it sits at just the right height for me and because of its sort of like thinner shape, it actually feels like it's doing something. Both of the pillows are coated in a really nice soft velvety fabric and they actually have like a zip across the back of them. At first I was like, all good, they're like washable pillows. Uh, but when I unzipped the neck pillow, all the stuffing just sort of like fell out of it. So I'm not really too sure on their purpose. It did mean though that I could unzip the lumbar pillow. You can actually see that it's filled with like foam, uh, which means it should hold its shape quite well over time and also explains why the like support that it gives is so intense. The seat and the body of the chair is made of cold foam, so it does feel a little bit firm at first, but I think that it should sort of help it hold its form and stop it compressing over time. The chair is upholstered in a mixture of PVC and PU leather, which means that it is easy to clean, but it can get a sort of a bit of hot and sticky. However, they have put some air holes into the backrest and the seat of the chair, so I think that should help. However, unfortunately, the leather does actually feel a little bit thin in places and I'd be a little bit worried about how it's gonna hold up over time. The T2 chair has a good range of adjustability and yes, it can do this. Using the handbrake style lever on this chair, you can recline the backrest up to 170 degrees. And then if you unlock the uh, rocking tilt mechanism, it then reclines a further 17 degrees, effectively putting your head below your legs like a bat. Or as I found out, if you do it a little too enthusiastically, upside down on the floor. The gas lift on this chair is class four, meaning that it should be of good quality, but I did find it really quite stiff at first, even though I did get a replacement. However, fortunately it has sort of loosened up a little bit over time and the height can be adjusted from 51.5 up to 60 centimeters. I'm about five foot seven and I definitely think this chair is more suited to taller users as I can only get my feet sort of flat on the floor at its lowest setting. Also on this chair, I found that both the paddles to adjust the tilt lock and the gas height uh, were quite small and awkward to reach. The armrests on this chair have a very smart sort of carbon fiber finish to them. And even though they look like they're made of hard plastic, they do actually have quite a bit of give to them. They're 4D adjustable, so you can move them up and down, forwards and backwards, inwards or outwards, also angle them in and out. However, I absolutely hate the armrests on this chair and it's just because they're so wobbly. I have to use them on their highest setting for my particular desk and that just seems to like emphasize the issue to the point where I don't even want to use them. I've tried tightening up all the sort of bolts on, that I can find on there and it just doesn't seem to improve the problem at all. I think it's more to do with the actual design themselves and the way the armrest fits onto the metal column. I just think it's not snug enough so it just seems to move around. I think these armrests are quite poor quality compared to the rest of the chair. The T2 Road Warrior does come with a two year warranty and it feels very heavy and solid. And I think that's thanks to the steel frame that's inside that allows this chair to support up to 135 kilograms. The base is also a decent size and it's also made of metal so it feels nice and solid like the frame of the chair. The 75 millimeter wheels on this chair are certainly unique. They remind me quite a lot of the wheels I used to have on my scooter as a child. Uh, they are great for preventing marks on wooden flooring and they work really well even on thick carpet, but oh my God, do they glide. I really wish Corsair had implemented some sort of like locking mechanism as I found myself drifting around a little too easily on my wooden flooring. And I really did find it quite irritating at times. Corsair always do a good job of making their products look good and aesthetically this chair looks fantastic. It's still got that sort of like sporty vibe but I think it's much more adult and stylish than a lot of its competitors on the gaming chair market. I really like all the stitching on this chair. I think the black and white contrast looks really good and it's all nice and neat and gives it a really premium look. The carbon fiber style material all across the back of the chair and on the colored accents matches the armrest really nicely and it fits in really well with the racing style design. 
I like the angular design of the plastic covers they've used to disguise the recline mechanism and I think the little rubber plugs to hide the screws are a nice touch. The branding is very tasteful with Corsair sort of embossed into the backrest. There's a very smart embroidered logo on the back of the chair and there's also some subtle branding on both of the supplied pillows, uh, the recline mechanism and also the two plugs to cover the screws. Overall Corsair have done a very good job of making this a really attractive chair which I think is very important when it comes to a piece of furniture. So the big question is, is the Corsair T2 Robe Warrior worth the £320 price tag? And for me, the short answer is no. The gaming chair market is really quite competitive and for this price point, this chair just doesn't feel up to scratch. It's got a lot going for it in terms of design and comfort, but it's just got too many issues that I'd find annoying if I had to use this chair every day. The wheels are quite cool, but they're just not practical on my hardwood flooring. The paddles are too awkward to reach. And the main problem is the really wobbly armrests. I think that if you can get over the issues that this chair has and you're a big Corsair fan, you're gonna end up with a chair that's really quite attractive and comfortable, but it's just not for me. If you like this video from Kit Geary, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from Kit Geary, hit the subscribe button.